threats. Uh, find a way. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to Snack Time. My name is Ben, and in today's video, we're going to be taking a look at Velociraptor. Clever girl. Velociraptor is a very powerful forensics and incident response tool. In this video, I'm going to be giving you a brief introduction to the platform. Then I'm going to show you how to deploy it with Docker, Portainer, and Nginx Proxy Manager. If you have any questions, leave them down below. Otherwise, let's go ahead and take a look at Velociraptor. So this is the basic interface for Velociraptor. You have a couple of options when you've signed in. You can you know, change the the theme, make it dark. Every security tool should have a dark mode. And you can expand the sidebar here. This is where you view different artifacts, server events, server artifacts. You got notebooks. Uh, but the, the easiest way to, to start with this is to generate your very first client. That way it'll give you some information to play around with. I definitely also encourage you to take any of the training that Velociraptor offers on their main site as well as reading you know, the documentation. They have a very extensive knowledge base that can definitely assist you with any sort of questions. And they have an amazing community and a really, really helpful Discord server. The best way for me to show you some of the things on Velociraptor is to deploy a client in our environment. So let's expand our menu and go to server artifacts and click on the plus symbol here. And let's do a search for server utils create MSI. We click on this option here. You see, this is what it's going to be doing. We can configure any sort of parameters. So let's launch this. We can see that it's done. Under download results, let's click prepare download. Once this is done, you simply click on this link here and download the file. This will download a zip file for us. If we open it up, we'll see several files, but the one that we are wanting is under uploads and under scope. This is the MSI file that we'll be deploying to any of our Windows machines. I'm going to drag it to my desktop here and minimize my screen. And I'm going to take this file and I'm going to copy it to another machine. We'll be right back. Now that we're on our other host machine, let me show you what we need to do to install this. Simply double click on the file, hit yes, and you're all done. Let's navigate back to Velociraptor. Now let's search for clients. If you just click the magnifying glass, it'll show you all the clients that are connected. And we see that our Windows 10 machine has been connected, it's online, and we can start doing some investigation or monitoring. We can click into this client. And there are several things that we can do here. We'll get a little bit more information about it, but you can execute shell commands from here pretty easily. You can also use the VQL language to do additional queries. You can pull different files from the file system, including the registry. But this is really just the tip of the iceberg on the things that this software can do. I can't even begin to describe to you all the capabilities of this software, especially when it comes to incident response or just simple monitoring. I highly encourage you to check out their website, watch some of their videos, read some of their documentation. And if you have questions, you can always join their Discord server. There's some extremely helpful people there that are definitely willing to get you going. Next, let me show you how to set up Velociraptor using Docker, Portainer, and Nginx Proxy Manager. Let's start by finding the website. Now, obviously, if you type in Velociraptor, you're probably going to find a picture of a dinosaur. So let's add space app on the end of this and we can easily find it in Google. You can also just type in velociraptor.app. 
we go to the website, first place that I want to head off to is to the GitHub of NetApp. And if I scroll down, I'll be able to see how we can install this with Docker. So here's the URL we'll need. So when you get to this page, this will show you how to do it through the command line. However, since we'll be using Portainer, we are going to pick apart some of these files and we're gonna make some changes as well. The two files that we're gonna to need to be able to view are the .env and the Docker Compose YAML file. Open up the .yaml file. And if you're used to Portainer, you may recognize this file. This is what we'll put into the stacks of Portainer. Let's copy this file and let's head over to Portainer. I want to first set up a persistent volume. So if I go to add volume, I'm gonna give it a name, Velociraptor. And now I'm going to go over to stacks and add stack. I'm going to name my stack Velociraptor again. And now I'm going to paste that Docker YAML file in here. As with previous videos, we're going to be filtering all of our traffic through Nginx Proxy Manager. So let's remove these ports. Next, let's download our .env file so that we can upload it to our server. Download raw file. And now once that's downloaded, we'll go back to Portainer and we'll load variables from the .env file. GitHub downloaded my file in a different format since the .env is typically hidden. So I'm going to put an asterisk in the file name so that it can show me all of the files that are in my downloads folder. I see it downloaded the env into a text document. I'm gonna upload this. You can see that it filled out all of the information for us. The only thing that I would change here is the admin password. And we're going to make this password one, two, three, exclamation point. A very difficult password indeed. And just in case you're unclear on what it's going on here, you see where it says name, velox underscore user. Well, that matches this up here. So it's filling out this information with the value. Now that we have everything copied from the GitHub, we will need to make a few changes to our Docker Compose file since we've already created a volume that we want to use inside of Portainer. So let's remove this dot slash in front of the Velociraptor for volumes. Since we named our volume Velociraptor, that's how it's being identified here. Now we need to add a couple of lines at the bottom of this file to tell Portainer that we've already created this volume and it doesn't need to create it for us. Spacing is very important when it comes to a YAML file, so use tab when you're doing the different sections. We'll do a tab here. And this is the name of our volume. And we'll do another tab here and tell Portainer that this volume is external from the container. We will have to make a couple of changes to our configuration file once this is deployed. However, we're ready to go. Next, let's head over to Namecheap and establish our subdomain. Once we've signed into Namecheap and we're under advanced DNS, we'll establish a new A record. So we'll go to new record, A record. I'm just gonna call this VLO and I'm going to use the IP address of my server. Keep in mind, this is the external IP address. I'm gonna save changes. And the reason I did this step now is because I will need this information when I'm modifying the configuration file of Velociraptor. We head back, we will need to SSH into our Docker server. For this, I will be using the Windows terminal. Let's SSH into my server. And we'll be using the built-in SSH client that comes with Windows. For this, I will need elevated permissions. So I'm going to switch over to the root account. I'm gonna do a sudo switch user su to root. I'll paste in my password and now I am root. Now we need to find where our data is being stored for Velociraptor. I'm going to show you the quickest way to identify where it is being stored. If you go under Portainer, under volumes, 
you can see the exact path is right here. We could even copy this path and do a CD space and then paste the path. And now we're exactly where we need to be. We can see that there is a server.config YAML file, which is the file that we'll need to modify. And the reason that we are modifying this is because we're going to be using Nginx to handle all those certificates. Since Velociraptor does require a secured and encrypted connection between endpoint and server. We're going to be using nano to edit the server.config.yaml file. So we're going to type in nano and then the server.config.yaml. If you've never used Velociraptor before, this can definitely seem a little intimidating. However, I'll do my best to explain what exactly we're changing and why we're changing it. The first section we have here is our client, and this is going to be the information that's going to be integrated with our client when we generate it from Velociraptor. It's asking for a server URL, and we're going to need to make sure that this is the server address of where we want to point our clients. So in our case, it's going to be HTTPS colon backslash backslash velo.senhow.com. And you may notice we're not putting a port at the end of this. And that's because we're going to be using HTTPS to handle both the GUI and the traffic coming from the clients. This is the easiest way to do this that doesn't require you to set up additional port forwarding. If we scroll down past the certificate, the next part of this file that we'll need to edit will be the use self-signed SSLs. We're not going to be doing that. We're going to be using signed SSLs from Let's Encrypt, but we're also going to be letting Nginx Proxy Manager handle that. We're going to keep scrolling down here. The GUI port is 8889, and it's okay to leave that alone because we're going to be forwarding traffic from HTTPS to that port. But we also want to make sure that this port is the same one that our front end is, is going to be listening on. And I'll show you that here in a second. We are going to add a line after this. We're going to use two spaces and we're going to add use underscore plain underscore HTTP colon space true. The reason that we're doing this is because our traffic is already going to be encrypted by Nginx Proxy Manager. After adding the HTTP plain text here, next thing we need to do is to modify our front end. The front end is the part of Velociraptor that communicates with your endpoints. And as I said before, this can listen on the same port as the GUI so that we don't have to do any port forwarding. So let's change this to the same port that we had on a GUI, which is 8889. And let's add that same exact line that we had up at the top for use underscore plain underscore HTTP colon space true. Since again, our certs will be handled by Nginx Proxy Manager. Let's save these changes by hitting Control X and hitting Y and then hitting Enter to overwrite. Let's jump back to Portainer. Let's go to our containers and let's go into Velociraptor and let's restart this. While this is restarting, we're going to go ahead and set up our Nginx proxy manager. So let's add a proxy host. And remember our subdomain, velo.senhow.com. And we're going to be forwarding the traffic to a host name instead of an IP address because that way we don't have to keep up if an IP address ever changes in Docker. Let's go back to Portainer and find that host name. So we go back to Container so we can see our host name is Velociraptor. We're going to copy that and head over to Nginx, paste it. And it's asking for a port. Remember, it's 8889. I'm going to block common exploits. I'm going to enable WebSocket support, and I'm going to save this. We're not quite ready to connect to our server yet, because remember, we do need HTTPS, and currently this is only HTTP. 
So let's click on our three little dots here and go to edit and head over to SSL. And we're going to request a new certificate. We're going to force SSL and we're going to agree to the terms of service and hit save. Now one of the final steps that we have to do before navigating to our new website is to make sure that Nginx is joined to the same network as our Velociraptor. So let's head back to Portainer once again. And once we're in here, let's go to our Nginx app, scroll to the very bottom. We can see that we're not joined to that network quite yet. So let's drop this down, select Velociraptor and hit join. Now we should be able to access our website. So if we click on velo.sinhow.com, it's asking us for a username and password. We can remember that I used admin, password123, exclamation point, don't tell anybody. And now we've signed in successfully to Velociraptor. Now you're ready to go with your own Velociraptor server. If you skipped over the introduction, head back to the beginning of the video where I'll show you how to generate a client and connect a computer and start pulling information. If you go to their main website, which is velociraptor.app, there's training courses you can take, very easy to watch YouTube videos. There's also presentations, a VQL reference guide, and tons of documentation about the platform. And there's also an extremely helpful knowledge base, as well as multiple ways for you to engage with the community. I really hope that you found this video helpful and that Velociraptor helps you with your incident response and digital forensics. Thanks so much for watching. Have a good one.